Learn right now how to make this old worn tile look like lava countertops. In this video, we teach you step by step how we use lava as our inspiration and restored old tile to look like custom countertops perfect for this vacation rental. We didn't remove the old tile, we left it in place, we did a concrete overlay, and we're going to show you every step of the way right now. We did this by hand. This is a DIY friendly project. It includes spray paint, stone coat countertop epoxy, and a little know-how. These steps are simple, they're fun, and we can't wait to show you the outcome of our lava-inspired countertops. We're on the big island of Hawaii. These 40-year-old tile countertops needed an update, and they were the perfect canvas to create custom countertops. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. We went to the hardware store. We got some fast setting cement and some polymer. These are gonna be key in this project. Doing a concrete overlay over existing tile isn't that difficult. First, we need to prep it right. We're gonna mask the cabinets, the floors, and anything that we don't wanna mess on. I like using a heavy duty ram board on the ground to cover the floors, and then I use a delicate surface tape to pre-mask the cabinet perimeter. This ensures that I don't hurt the finish of the cabinetry. I'm gonna use three mil plastic that I attach to this tape so that I protect the cabinets. I'll mask the perimeter of the sink. Any tile that I'm not going to cover, always keeping in mind that I don't wanna worry about the surfaces I don't wanna coat while I'm working. Prior planning prevents poor performance, so prep it right. I'm using a four inch diamond cup wheel. This is going to abrade the ceramic tile so I get an awesome bond between the concrete overlay and the existing tile countertop. Be sure to clean up the dust. After I vacuum the dust, I'm gonna wipe the counters down with some water and then I'll go ahead and wipe that dry so I can apply the next step. We're gonna use our quarter inch nap roller to roll on the concrete bonding adhesive. This is a polymer that ensures a great bond. After we roll on our thin coat, it's time to mix up our cementol. This is a fast setting concrete that's gonna mimic lava. I really like the texture. I simply mix this by hand to start on the backsplash. I like a nice peanut buttery thick mixture and I'm gonna work this backsplash with a trowel. This trowel is gonna give me a perfect finish and I just take my time. It doesn't want to bond really well at first. Just stay with it and as that starts to set up you'll find that magic moment where everything really starts to adhere. By using more of the polymer you can actually create a smoother finish to mimic the look you're going for. I'm going to use Bondo on the front edge of the countertops because they're wood. I've sanded these, I've wiped the dust, and the Bondo is going to give me that lava texture that I'm going for. A nice little bonus, it dries really fast so I don't have to wait for the next step. After the Bondo dries, I'm going to sand that so it's nice and smooth to the touch with no rough edges. Now I'm gonna mix up a lot of my cementol. This is gonna to start to cover and overlay our existing tile. I'm using our concrete bonding adhesive instead of water. This creates a sticky mixture, but it bonds tenaciously. It's a secret in doing an overlay that's gonna last for years. All we're doing here is using our hands to create the look and texture that I like. The working time in the cementol is pretty decent and it starts to set up as you work with it. So you get to get the look you're going for by smoothing it out as it starts to cure. Using a trowel and some extra concrete bonding adhesive will help to lubricate the surface to make it smoother and smoother. I don't wanna make it too smooth. I wanna mimic that lava look. If I make it too smooth, the epoxy will just make it look like a black countertop. So the key here is leave enough texture so I make it look like lava, but not too much so it's not a functional countertop. 
I started at one end of this kitchen and did the entire project consecutively. I bounced back and forth from where I started to the new sections so that I could get the timing right and adding more concrete bonding adhesive helped me smooth those counters to the desired texture. This was key. I liked that peanut butter thickness. It got some really fun texture and I came back and smoothed it out as it started to set up. Using the Big Island of Hawaii as my inspiration and thinking about the different lava fields that I've seen, many of them resembled the textures that I was creating. Thinking of this and using this in my mind, I had so much fun creating this texture and this project. I'm going to pour the epoxy the next day, but I don't want the tape to get locked into any of this concrete that I've done. So I demasked everything so I could start fresh tomorrow. It doesn't take a long time to mask and it'll ensure that I get crisp lines when I pour the epoxy and color the concrete base structure that I've created. The next day I came back with Catherine and it was time to pour the epoxy and color the substrate. We simply re-prepped the kitchen. This was no big deal. And we wanted to get any of the high points off the substrate. We used 220 grit sandpaper to remove anything that may have been a little bit too rough. And this was a perfect base to go ahead and use our Rust-Oleum black spray paint to color these the color of lava. I found an extra jumbo sized can of black Rust-Oleum spray paint at the hardware store. It had a large fan, so it made very short work of painting these. It was the perfect happy accident. After the paint is all dry and set up, we're going to use our stone coat countertop epoxy. Our art coat has extra UV protection. We're going to use this product to do these countertops. We're going to mix it at a one to one ratio for about two minutes using a drill and a paddle mixer. First, we're going to use a roller. We're only going to roll a thin coat on because I don't want to pour a flood coat and lose all the texture that we did. This was key in this project. I de-lint the roller so I don't get any nibs and nubs in the surface and I simply roll out a nice thin coat. If you want it thicker, you can roll out multiple coats and you could play with this to your desired feel. I'm gonna use our chop brush to get to the areas that are hard to get to with the roller and this was perfect for the front and back of the sink. I was so excited seeing the gloss that popped on these. You know, real lava actually has some gloss to it especially when the water has run up on it from the ocean, but this was absolutely mimicking mother nature and following that plan that I had hoped for. After I do the clear, I'm gonna use my torch to pop any excess bubbles. Any white milky areas, we'll go ahead and torch that out to clear them up to remove that air. Question of the day, if you were making lava countertops, would you leave them black just like lava or would you want some red magma on top like we're about to do? Let us know in the comments below. Now it's time to make our lava that we're gonna pour on the surface. We're using our dark red metallic and our gold dust. This gave us the look that we were truly going for and I got to be a volcano and pour out the lava wherever I desired. I tried not to do it too straight. I wanted it to really flow and mimic something natural, organic, something that you would actually see pouring out over these counters as if Mauna Kea was going off right now. This is one of the most fun functional art projects I've ever been a part of. I love it.
After about three hours, I came with a gloved hand and wiped any excess drips from underneath the countertops. This leaves me a smooth edge so that when I come back the next day, I can unprep this project and have finished surfaces. Let me know in the comments what other projects would this texture look be applicable to for you? Would it be a hearth? Would it be a weeping waterfall? What can you think of that would create functional art using textured overlays and epoxy? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to stay to the end of the video. We have some bonus content where we go on an adventure of our own. You won't want to miss it. Visit StoneCoatCountertops.com to see all the products used in this video. You got this! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Mitch is the name, snorkeling's the game right here. I'm gonna have to do some drone footage, man. You ready to go get in the water? Yeah. Alright, let's do it.
Okay, we're on our way back. Yeah. Whoa. How are you guys feeling? Terrible. Probably just lost like at least a million pounds. <laughs>